So point heart right as you know it today. His name is Baringa. That's his traditional name. You can actually see him physically laying down on his back with his head, his shoulders, you can see his chest. He has been protecting the mouth of our river since time began. I'm from Minyama, so pretty close to Point Cartwright. Lived there all my life, so 23 years, born and raised pretty much. But then a resident from uh, for about 17 years. Um, I've been on the coast uh, since about 95. I've been here 20 years. We live in a Malula bar. Came back here to live about 10, 12 years ago, and we now live on Pacific Boulevard. We live in uh, Bedina, so pretty close to Point Cartwright and uh, La Balsa. I'm actually down the street. Um, I'm just in the Bedina area ever since I was very young. I've lived on the Point for 21 years. Well, I come here in 1972 and I built some of the first houses in Bedina um, for Kiwana Estates and I've had a love um, relationship with Point Cartwright um, for, you know, for the nearly 50 years. I was going to Point Cartwright from when I was a grommy, surfing Point Cartwright, fishing with Dad. I used to work as a commercial pilot, uh, so I saw Point Cartwright also from the air and how it is beautiful, amazing. And uh, now I live in Pacific Boulevard, Badina. And it's just a magic, magic area. Um, I never... Uh, I have lived anywhere that's just so special. The connection between the river and then the ocean being so close and that beautiful green space, it's just a fabulous place to live. Been lucky enough to go to Europe and plenty of Asia and honestly the sunny coast is the best place in the world, particularly Point Cartwright. Best sunsets I've ever seen, best surf ever, I just love it. You just can feel what's happening with the sea. It's quite interesting, really. Yeah. It's not just a big pounding all the time. Sometimes it's really loud. If it's high tide and a big, big surf, you know, you certainly know it. It's quite loud. Other times it's lulling away during the winter when it's calm. Yeah, it's a beautiful feeling. It's so nice to just be able to walk like 10 metres and be on the beach and be on the sand. I love taking photos of birds and what have you and there's plenty to choose from up there including international migratory birds. They come in the summer and they feed on the rocky shores. You've got the osprey as well, they've made that home and they fish off the rocks there. I meet up with friends there because it's really beautiful. It's quite calming and tranquil with the views and everything and every Sunday my family and I actually make a huge deal of going down together having a sort of picnic and taking our dog and stuff. It's like a really nice bay for the dogs and everything so it's just like a really nice environment, um, natural environment to get away from the urban area. My best friend really is my dog and the best thing for me is that I can take my baby with me every day. So every day starts for us at normally around 5am and we walk along the front, around the point and then back again. So it's just a beautiful way to wake up every day. Being free to just walk there and have the beach one side and then the calmer water the other side, the sunsets. I like the peacefulness of it. I like the fact that you can just watch the oceans, watch the whales. And I love the fact that the turtles nest right there. What we love about it is, is the atmosphere of the place. It's that um, natural connection, that coastal interface, uh, the wildlife, the rocky shores. You know, you've got the literal rainforest, which is critically endangered. And you've got all this wonderful history. The surf's really super good when it's good. We share the, the surf break and we're a, a really good community surfing group. The kids when they're little used to swim in the little beach behind the, the jetty at the, um, at the boat ramp end uh, and up, up at the top end. There's lovely little beaches at each end. It's so, so good place to, have, to bring up children. Obviously the, uh, the headland's just an amazing place. It's a bonding place, a friendship group that's irreplaceable to be honest. 
there is this lady that walks her cockatiel every day and we see her uh, walking up and down and we walk our dogs and everything I've also seen people walk their cats and guinea pigs and stuff so it's like it's like this is a fun thing where you can just bring your pets out and it's kind of like a safe environment I guess for that as well I'm part of the bush care group so I weed there once a month. I was weeding yesterday <laughs> in the rain. And I get tremendous satisfaction about knowing that I'm doing my bit to preserve the nature on Point Cartwright. Just sitting with someone on the dunes, looking up at the clouds and looking out into the sea, it's beautiful. Um, going like riding on a bike, just feeling the wind and the sea air coming in and looking through the foliage and the little patches and just seeing glimpses of ocean or standing on the point and just looking out at the view, it's amazing. As a kid you grow up here, you go, your parents take you to the rock pools, you see the blue ringed octopuses, you see the little turtles and um, you see the little crabs, you see the sea slugs as a kid and then maybe as an as a adult you go, you, you paddle out a bit further and you start seeing dolphins, you start seeing the whales a bit closer up, you see the eagles fly overhead as you're surfing. So every, once in a while you get the, um, the yellow-tailed uh, cockatiels come in, in in their season. We're very conscious of the environment when you're up there, you know, you know what the waves are doing, the surf's doing, we're looking for shells on the beach. Um, I think it's the people more than anything, but you're, you're meeting people in a beautiful, neutral place. Um, that's special when the whales are coming through, walk to the top of the headland and look at the whales. If you're feeling like being alone, you don't want to walk with all the other people, you can walk to the, you know, do your own thing, walk up the top of the hill or not. It's a, it's a special place. It's a beautiful place, a great place. And it's got, you know, it's building everyone's, um, everyone's histories every day, you know, it, it, having, the, having an, an area of a natural beauty like that. I'd like to see as little change as possible. I think the reason why everyone feels such a connection to it is because of the way it is, because it is so special. There's lots of people that enjoy that area. There's lots of people from different walks of life, from different ages, um, mindsets, lots of different diverse groups get to that area and everyone connects really well. The site used to have this wonderful um, uh, water lagoon, freshwater lagoon on it, which early explorers used to supply their, their ships and stuff like that. But, um, uh, with the vegetation that got removed off the site, it, it dried up and um, probably about in the 1930s, which was a similar time that the, the rock art that was around the cliffs uh, started to disappear. Um, but the Cubby Cubby sort of had a village centred around that water lagoon. And uh, I often think about what life would have been like back then, you know. We never wanted to change. <laughs> and, um, and if it has to change, that little area in the middle, I think, should be um, somehow managed so that dogs can't get in it. More greenery may be needed, more um, trees. It's a little bit empty, especially the place um, around the water tank uh, slope, and there is a big um, empty area which basically nothing even grass not growing there just few trees and um, as a person that um, dedicated a lot of time for fitness uh, I believe it will be a great idea to put some fitness equipment that in that area. I'd like to see it sort of locked in as a nature reserve to avoid more incremental tourism development um, that everyone with good hearts wants to um, improve their area, but um, I'd sort of like to see it held as, as back to nature as it can be from this stage, so that it's, it's the same for our children's children. I'd like, also like to see more of the uh, Indigenous heritage. We had a lovely lady, Bridget Chilly, do the Welcome to Country. I'd like to see her stories maybe on signs, a bit more of her heritage and her people who've, uh, you know, been here for a long time. Um, I'd like to see more of that, you know, um, so that people get educated when they go to the point. You know, do it subtly, but I think it could be really well done. I'd love to see more of 
the history of like Point Cartwright and La Bolsa like come into play like the original custodians of the land like getting to learn a little bit more about their history and like how they lived here and how it was important for them because as a younger generation I'm not sure if you feel this but I know I feel like for us I feel like we don't understand the history of it as much like personally and I'd love to see like that history continue on for all the generations and still be as important. Mm. Yes. Working with council to stop bright lights casting light out to sea, hopefully working with council to stop ambient lighting becoming more and more you know, bigger, you know, sort of brighter in the sky at night. It's so important because the loggerheads are endangered. We've got a very important nesting area and everything we do is based around you know, keeping the environment good. My um, real interest in there is to um, convert the reserve into a conservation park so that all the values that are, are, are connected with the biodiversity and the history and all, all the surfing areas and all that sort of stuff are all combined together into a uh, conservation zoning. We're actually incorporated to try to help council look at that values and be a group that will look after it. And we've identified numerous opportunities. One of the most important one is the nudibracs. They are by far the greatest outcome that we've discovered at Point Cartwright. But then there is some really significant um, indigenous cultural heritage um, areas there. Um, and they really have to be protected as long with, along with the literal forest. It's a really nice environment and I don't want them to urbanise it or make too many changes that's going to make it um, less natural or uh, just, uh, just really improvements to help um, people really appreciate the environment and everything like that and what we have because we're really lucky and not um, take that away because I think that's what really everyone really appreciates about the La Bolsa and Point Cartwright area. It's still lovely to see nature in all its glory on the point and I'd never like to lose that. I want it preserved as a, a beautiful place for future generations.